What is up ladies and gentlemen, I'm Scott, welcome back to Fudge Mapper, and today I'm excited to bring you more Fallout 4 content, and we know a ton of you have been asking for it, and this has to be one of our most badass Fallout builds to date, draw your swords and bow before the knight. The knight is the ultimate protector, chivalrous and honourable to those in need, dutiful and loyal to his brothers in battle, and an unstoppable force to his enemies. The knight is quick, durable and unbelievably strong. Garbed in shining polished armour and wielding a razor sharp blade, the knight will cut through monsters, raiders and sins alike with astounding ease. The knight values order and justice, seeking a purpose in the chaotic wasteland when he isn't travelling the commonwealth alone, keeping the peace and delivering justice, he's serving with his brothers of steel, rising through the ranks and making his mark as Arthur's greatest knight. Before we get into the build, don't forget that the timestamps can be found below in the description to help you navigate throughout the video, but with that said, let's get right into the video, starting off with the knight's backstory and basic values. The knight was born in the suburbs of Boston and had a standard upbringing for the most part. His house was on the edge of a forest and him and his brother would spend most of their time playing and exploring the woodland beyond the gate at the end of their backyard. His parents were by no means overprotective, as he had mentally mapped out miles of the surrounding forest by the time he was 10. The knight loved to play at battle with his brother. They would find a spot in the forest and give each other two minutes to scour the area for the longest, sturdiest stick they could find before duking it out. Sometimes one of them would get enough hits on the other's body to qualify as a kill. Other times the sticks would break and they'd be forced to wrestle for victory. The knight was at a disadvantage as he was four years younger than his brother and a hell of a lot smaller, but the challenge made him grow stronger and he was also faster than his brother who spent a little too much time at the dinner table. Sometimes the neighbour, a girl named Nora, would join them on their adventures, but the knight never really felt comfortable fighting her. She preferred cheering from the sideline, pretending to be his older brother's captive, whom the knight had to rescue from certain death. When they weren't out in the forest fighting and searching for monsters, the knight was in his bedroom, reading fantasy books and historical tomes of medieval Europe. His favourite stories featured King Arthur, and he loved the ambiguity of the history. No one really knew how much was real and how much was made up, but the knight didn't care. He dreamed of stumbling across Excalibur, buried to the hilt in stone somewhere in the forest. At school, the teachers told him and every other child for that matter that he could be anything he wanted. But honestly, that didn't really appeal to the knight. He liked the order and sense of purpose the knights of history had. They were chivalrous and honourable, protecting the helpless and destroying evil. He may not have been able to find any true evils in suburban Boston to vow to defeat, but he found that he could get pretty close by dedicating time to sport. Playing in the high school soccer team, he could compete and battle other teams, and he got an immense sense of satisfaction from it. His favourite sport, however, was wrestling. There were no swords or shields, but wrestling was the ultimate adrenaline rush for him, and it felt like a duel. Years of wrestling, his much older and larger brother helped significantly, and he was unbeaten throughout high school. In his senior year of high school, he took part in the statewide championships and came alive on the mat. There was always a crowd gathered, and the knight thrived under pressure. He made it to the final and was pitted against the reigning state champion, an 18-year-old who almost had to crouch to turn sideways to fit through a double door of the gym. He was aptly named the Giant, and the knight could only sit in astonishment and wonder what on earth his parents parents had been feeding him as he watched the Giants qualifying match. He wrestled exactly as the Knight could have guessed, using his sheer size to overpower and smother his opponent. The Knight almost felt bad for the other combatant who tried multiple times to get the Giant off his feet. Each attempt was frivolous as his legs didn't look close to buckling. The night before the match, the Knight returned to his bedroom early. He looked over his enormous bookshelf to find a book to read before sleeping, and he landed on the fitting story of King Arthur and the Giant of Mont St. Michael. Arthur had masterfully beaten the Giant by outmaneuvering the the colossal beast. He cut the monster in the brow, blinding the thing with its own blood and making Arthur impossible to see, let alone catch. The knight laughed. He figured he wouldn't be able to use that tactic in this fight. The next day, after a plate of eggs and bacon, the knight put on his gear for the duel. The gymnasium was full of spectators, and in the knight's mind, he was walking into a coliseum. When he saw the giant lurching high above him and just about every other person in the building by a solid foot, he could tell the reigning champion hadn't even considered the potential of losing today. They met in the middle of the mat and shook hands and then they turned and made their way to the starting positions. As he did, he spotted Nora among the spectators. He gave a quick smile before turning his attention back to his opponent. The bell chimed and the knight had begun slowly edging his way around the mat, giving the giant no preview of his speed. The giant came stomping towards him, sending vibrations through the mat with each step. He reached his gargantuan hands for the knight's shoulders, but the knight ducked out of his reach. This visibly angered the champion who upped the tempo now, and the knight trumped that tempo, parrying attempted grapples left, right and centre. The knight had no intention of trying to get the giant to the ground. 
The champion relied on the close proximity, barreling his opponents to the ground, and once they were grounded, it was game over. The giant came charging again, spreading his arms wide in anticipation of another duck from the knight, but this time the knight went low, using the giant's momentum against him. He caught the leg in a motion and wrapped himself around it, letting the giant's charge send him sprawling face down into the mat. His legs flailed frantically trying to catch the knight, but he was already back on his feet. He jumped on the champion's back, wrenching his arm up in a hammerlock and pressing his chest against the giant's head. The the reigning champion writhed in fury, but the knight didn't budge until the referee announced the victory. The knight stood triumphant. The knight was the talk of the school for the next week, and he enjoyed the notoriety. Throughout high school, he had wanted to approach Nora, but despite his courage on the mat, he didn't quite have the nerve of it. When school came to an end, the knight hung up his soccer boots and his wrestling gear and decided to serve with the United States Armed Forces in the war effort. There was no greater sense of purpose and honor in his mind than protecting the country and his loved ones on the battlefield, and his attitude soon landed him in a leadership role, commanding a squadron at the Battle of Anchorage. While he is too humble to speak of it all in detail, it's said that his courage inspired many and his strategic expertise was one of the defining factors in contributing to the success of the reclamation. When he returned home, he plucked up the courage to ask Nora out for a drink, and before long they were settling down to raise a family in Sanctuary Hills. After awakening from cryosleep in Vault 111, the knight will initially be furious at his son's kidnappers and his wife's murderers. He will seek to destroy them by any means necessary, but as he ventures through the post-apocalyptic wasteland, the abundance of chaos and the total lack of order and justice in the Commonwealth will gradually erode his sanity. He will long for some structure, a code which he can live by. Early in the game, he'll create order for himself, striving to do good wherever possible and making it his duty to deal with the mutated monstrosities lurking around every corner. Eventually though, the Brotherhood of Steel will provide the perfect outlet for the way that knight wants to live. Whether or not he is passionate about the preservation of ancient technologies and the Brotherhood's overall ideology, one thing the knight values is their structure. They live by a strict and clear-cut code, value companionship, and have a hierarchy based on merit and contribution to the cause. He will be adamant about reaching a high rank within the Order, and while he doesn't have a distinct hatred for synths, he can get behind the Brotherhood's reasoning and can see why they are a problem. Paladin Dance will make his opinion on synths a little grey, however, as the bond you may choose to develop in his storyline could make destroying synths difficult for you. Therefore, if you will be playing the Far Harbor DLC, you may just decide to create peace as opposed to reporting it straight to the Brotherhood. The decision is up to you though, and both choices can be rationalized in the Knight's values. Also, it just happens that the name of the leader of the Brotherhood is Arthur Maxon, and in some ways it seems fitting to him as he'd eventually be a Knight under the leadership of a man named Arthur. Lastly, the Knight won't humor the idea of siding with any of the Raider clans in Nuke World. They're common thieves and murderers, and the Knight will consider it his bound duty to eliminate them in Entirely. At the beginning of the game, the knight's special stats will be 10 strength, 1 perception, 10 endurance, 1 charisma, 1 intelligence, 1 agility, and 4 luck. When you get the special book from under Sean's crib in Sanctuary Hills, put the point into luck so you can lock down the idiot savant perk. You'll want to get all the bobbleheads in your adventure, except for intelligence one of course, as that would screw up the idiot savant perk benefits. 10 points into strength and endurance is an absolute given for the knight. He's powerful and can take a hit. Any less would insult his honor. And with a strong investment here, we can afford to neglect most most of the other skills. As you'd probably gather from his backstory and the fact he doesn't just roll over his enemies in fights, agility is also quite important. Well, he may start with only one point there, but after walking off his 200 year freeze, this skill will come back to him in all his former glory. By the end of the build, agility will be significantly more impressive. The other skills don't really require mentioning, except for maybe luck, which after reading the special book, getting the bobblehead and adding a perk point will cap out at seven points. This will allow him to hit the lucky sweet spot, getting the best frequency of critical hits and combats, accessing all of the useful luck-based perks. Speaking of perk benefits, we know what stats to focus on for the knight, but now let's look at the perks which go into each of the stat lines. First up, we have the strength stat. The first perk to prioritize from here is big leagues. This perk is a must and you can start investing almost immediately. With this perk optimized, you'll do double melee damage with your sword and you'll be able to hit all opponents in front of you. You'll have the chance to cripple or disarm opponents and the most fun effect, you'll have the chance to grand slam an enemy's head clean off. Next comes armor and blacksmith and these perks are the staple of every good knight. In the post-war wastes, finding a reliable castle-forged sword or a set of master-crafted armor can be quite tricky, so having those skills at your disposal is invaluable. Take all ranks of armor so you can access all four ranks of armor mods, and then take two ranks of blacksmith for rank two melee weapon mods. Lastly, from strength, we have Rooted. The knight is powerful and quick in a fight, but the most important thing is he is gallant. He isn't going to flee when the going gets tough, and with the Rooted perk maxed out while standing still, you gain 50 damage resistance, your melee attacks do 
50% more damage, and assailants who melee attack you while you're rooted in the place are immediately and automatically disarmed. Up next is Endurance, and like Strength, this is a staple for every hard-hitting knight. First, take all three ranks of Life Giver. Not only does this fit his role-playing as a protector of the people, this perk will also show off the knight's iron will and hardness in battle. Your health is instantly increased by 20 with each rank, and with rank 3, you'll slowly regenerate lost health over time. Then we have Adamantium Skeleton. Maybe the ice in Vault 111 made your bones tougher than metal, or maybe you're just that strong. With his perk maxed, your limb damage is completely eliminated. No amount of limb damage will cripple you. Lastly, we've got Solar Powered, and we only need one rank here. With this one perk investment, you gain plus 2 to strength and endurance between the daylight hours of 6am and 6pm. Praise the sun! Agility may start off insignificant, but that won't be the case for long. By the end of this build, the knight will be back to his old ways, dodging incoming blows like the wrestling expert and combat aficionado he is. This means you should invest a whole 7 perk points on the base stat, bringing it up to 9 along with the bobblehead. After that, Action Boy is a great pick, it's fully optimised, it'll increase AP regeneration speed by 75%, and the knight isn't the type of warrior who'll get worn out after one big swing of the sword. Moving Target is another great perk for saving 50% AP while sprinting and making it even harder to bring down. We already know that Rooted gives you a huge damage resistance while still, but with moving target you'll also get plus 50 damage resistance and 50 energy resistance while sprinting, so he's a complete tank still and in motion. The last agility perk is Blitz, and this goes perfectly with moving target. The perk increases melee distance significantly in VATS, and the further the distance the greater the damage. So you can quite literally barrel through your foes at speeds that make even you and your giant shining steel armor hard to see. Finally we have the luck stat. The first thing to do here is get plus 1 to the base stat. After that, it's hard to pass up three ranks of bloody mess. Not only does it allow you to inflict 15% extra damage in combat, but it makes every melee kill that much more gory and satisfying. Then get Idiot Savant, two ranks to be precise. With, with two well-spent perk points here, you'll randomly receive five times XP from any action, and if we keep intelligence at one point, this will happen quite often. Next come your critical hit perks, both fully maxed out, and these are better criticals and critical banker. With the former, critical hits will do 2.5 times normal damage, and with the latter you can store up to 4 crits and vats to use when you really need them. At the end of the game, the knight's special stats will be 11 strength, 2 perception, 11 endurance, 2 charisma, 1 intelligence, 9 agility, and 7 luck. As for gear, your base layer clothing will be the disciple's cowl and the torn shirt with ragged pants. The Disciple's Cowl is pretty much just for the incredibly badass aesthetic, but the shirt and pants offer plus one bonuses to both agility and endurance. Over this, wear a full set of heavy metal armor with the polished modification for the perfect knightly style. On the chest and legs, put on the ultra light mod for lighter weight and AP bonuses, and then put weighted on the arms so that your melee attacks can ignore some of your target's armor. Your sword of choice will be a Chinese officer sword. You can modify one of your own, making it serrated and even possibly electrified, but alternatively, you can get the legendary variant with the suitably epic name, the Sword of Wonders. This is a great choice for ignoring 30% of your foe's damage and energy resistance. The Knight won't be using the Lone Wanderer perk, so companions are totally viable. The best pick from a role-playing perspective is Kate. The circumstances in which you meet her are very much like a damsel in distress kind of story, except a little more aggressive, and her life is at rock bottom, and you can clear her of her drug addiction and romance her. While the Knight may strive to do good, he isn't too invested in the settlement situation, the Pridwin makes for the perfect base of operation, should you really need one. There you have it guys, subscribe to Fudge Mumpet if you're new to our channel, and if you enjoy the build and the return of our Fallout content, give the video a like and show us your support. Don't forget that type stamps can be found in the description to help you navigate throughout the video, along with links to our social media accounts and Patreon. Thanks so much for watching guys, I'm Scott, and I look forward to nerding out with you again next time.